ladies and gentlemen, my name is Christian Western Chandler, alias Christopher, and I am autistic. I functionally autistic. In this animation, with Wikipedia facts and book diagrams, and in my own words and opinions, we will look into autism, why it is, possible causes, and treatments and cures, and how we autistics should be treated and respected in real life social situations. First, autism. What is it? In a nutshell, it is a malfunction in the neural development that impairs social interactions, communication, and restricted or repetitive behaviors. In the brain, autism affects many parts. Autism especially affects But that's Common symptoms of autism include and should be observed to notice little to no eye contact, malcommunication with delayed babbling, unusual gestures, low responsiveness, try calling their name. In that young age, they seldom respond if they have autism. As well as unsynced atypical vocal patterns. They also will have lack of intuition of other people lack of attention to social stimuli, and little to no smiling. Imagination and imaginative play is often blank in autistic minds, but with training, they may be able to think in pictures at least, like the famous Miss Temple Grandin. By the way, boys are more affected with autism than girls. That's just the way it is. Compulsive behavior or type of ADD, attention deficit disorder, is also common. In worst cases, self-destructive behavior such as self-cutting, hurting others, and bullying possibly, may be apparent. Fortunate for me, I do not go into self-destructiveness. I do not hurt myself, and I do not hurt others. The worst for me is essentially biting my fingernails sometimes. Feeling restricted is also common. Staying within their comfort zones with realistic behavior, oh, ritualistic behavior, and such. And with repetition in play, we may as well be walking around in circles for infinity time. And some of us actually do. Parents and guardians should be very watchful and cautious of any autistic symptoms as they can be obvious by the age of three years old. I myself spoke first at six weeks with the word monkey in an attempt at saying mommy. My vocabulary and speech grew great until I stopped talking at one and a half years old and I did not speak again until when I was seven. The other infant symptoms followed in suit. A controversy began when they blamed mercury and MMR vaccines. So there was a move from all vaccines in early 2000, and yet the autism rate still grew over the decade.
going back to what you can do for your autistic child, you can do a number of things. But of course, the most important thing is to positively, emotionally encourage them. And, try, and give them hugs anyway, even if they don't want it. They will feel the love eventually, because I know I have. My mom never stopped hugging me. Another thing you can do with them is floor time. You get on the floor, you play with them. You should build Lego sets. I had my own city made out of Legos. It was a very big city too. It was pretty much an early version of my city of Quickville. I housed my electric hedgehog, Sanchu, and Rose Chu in, in the comics I had drawn. I put all the bricks and pieces in the boxes under here, but they were over there on the other side of my room. One big city. It was massive. It was great. You can, and of course, there's also therapy, psychiatry, and special autism places. I highly encourage mainstreaming them. Letting them be nor letting them try to fit in with the normal places like high like high school and middle school. I fit in perfectly after I I so did. But never ever send them to a mental institution. It's just wrong. It's a dark, evil place. I was almost forced into there once, but my parents would not have it. Anyway, on a more modern interest note, according to the uh, Wikipedia article, the internet helps autistic individuals bypass nonverbal cues and emotional sharing they find hard to deal with. They also apparently formed online communities and work remotely. Listen, from extended personal experience with internet socializing, I can tell you the truth of the internet. There are a lot of sick-minded twisted, evil, dark, sloppy, gross, weird individuals out there. And you can never tell who they are from anybody else because they hide behind the mother skirts of a nominee that is also known as the Internet. They go online talking to random people, deceiving, tricking, blackmailing. Just so they can drag our clear, they so they can drag our once clear names through the worst mud, blood, and bodily fluids. It makes me sick. Ugh. They are ungrateful, immature. They need to grow up. But that they even range from the young, the teenage, even some adults. I swear. I have my own website for my science comics. But then they hacked in them and took it away. I grabbed it back, but after a while I got tired of it, so I took the websites down myself. <sighs> I also have my own MySpace and Facebook. Gone. They can hack your computers, your game consoles, laptops, cell phones, and maybe even your iPods. They just do not let up. I have been a victim of their ways. I never, I never socialize online again. And I scream my phone calls. I hardly ever answer my phone anymore. And I am emotionally damaged by them. It's just damn pitiful, horrifying. Online gaming, on the other hand, is different. The other players, they just come and go. Well, I accomplish my video game goals. No friendships are made, and information searches and shopping online is fine. It is the social websites like Facebook and MySpace that are travesties. The only way to socialize is in real life. Fellow autistic people, I encourage you to man and woman up respectively. Go out into the real world and make real friends with full, great quality friendships. Do it now! Socializing tips and also a little bit more history on myself to be revealed in the, follow in the following parts in the remainder of this tutorial. So stay tuned. Thank you.
Back in my teenage years at Manchester High School of Midnight, Virginia, I really felt emotionally rich because I had a great number of friends. The closest and majority of were some sweet girls. My circle of gal pals was the best asset and blessing anyone could ever ask for. They understood me, and I understood them. We appreciate each other. We hung out, conversed, and hung out you know, between within our classes, like home ec and uh, science and math and even English. And sometimes we would help each other out. Those are the best of times, pretty much. And even I even had a high school sweetheart like most would. And the quality throughout was great. It would be most appreciated by any person, autistic or not. Sadly though, about my high school years, of which I can only complain about, were two things. And I did not realize these till after I graduated. Actually, one I realized mid-graduation. But after graduation, I realized that I was naive on the subject of dating throughout high school. The mandatory sexual education class is good for after date number three and so, but how do we even get to date number one? That's my question. I really would have appreciated a mandatory dating education class alongside sexual education. Also, abstinence is a joke. The virgin breaker needs to happen before adulthood arrives because being an adult virgin sucks. Even for us autistics and mentally challenged. And the second thing about my high school years that I, can, I would complain about is my high school graduation ceremony. It was a very depressing day. It was raining, it was dark, it was dreary. Anyway, I got, went up and got my diploma and uh, I did not shake anybody's hand. I mean, there were important people there. I did not shake anybody's hands. I just grabbed my diploma, cried, and ran off the stage. Went to a back room, set up, set a table by myself for a little while. But then my best gal pal, Tip, met up with me, and uh, she made me feel a little better. I would really love to uh, see her again, at least hang out for a little while. My high school years were the best and most emotionally encouraging for me. But after graduation in 2000 and moving back to Lane Ruckersville, it was all downhill for me. My adult years suck, and I'm soon to turn 29. I left my heart back at Manchester High in Midlothian. I, gra I also graduated from Piedmont Virginia Community College with a uh, degree in computer drafting and design. But that and that graduation went better for me. Because I did not have so many, fr I did not have many friends back there, and plus, Marilyn Walsh just plain hated me. Obvi and obviously, I uh, talked ill about her in comics I drew, Portrayer as a Witch. She made it apparent that it was illegal to find true love in the state of Virginia, and that Virginia was a state for virgins. She still ticked me off of me. Even after I apologized to her for portraying her the way I did in my books, she would not accept my apology and she banned me from the grounds of Piedmont Virginia Community College. That's a one hell of a thank you for an apology or an apology accepted. Obviously she did not accept my apology. I hope she gets fired, period. And I also hope that the Game and Hobby place in Shawsville burns to the ground, along with Michael Snyder. And that's all my ranting for right now. Only about 10 miles south of Rutgersville, Virginia, is Charlottesville, Virginia, historic hometown 
of Mr. Thomas Jefferson, Mr. James Monroe, and Mr. James Madison. Lewis and Clark also started their famous expedition from this area. The expensive mall of downtown Charlottesville houses a number of small businesses, as well as the show-stopping pavilion tent and the Paramount Theater. This, as well as the Fashion Square Shopping Center, should both be social watering holes, but for me, sadly, they are not. Anywhere herein, even including the bars and events like Fridays After Five, nobody will even look or say hello to me. And of course, the internet reputation I have against me, sadly, thanks to those gross people that have taken my information and strewed it around in their misconceptions of weirdness, twisting everything. I've already gone into how bad that has affected me and how emotionally scarred I have I been. Back to social life, the autism increases my shyness, so I hardly have even the basic instinct to just say hello to anyone or even open up so easily with trust. I need other people to come up and talk to me Allow me to make it perfectly clear about who I am so that I am not misunderstood erroneously with the internet that's against me. My name is Christian Weston Chandler, high-functioning autistic artist. I am kind, caring, empathetic, emotional, a good friend, a loyal friend, cautious and weary trustworthy mostly honest I do not like to lie I would only lie to protect the other person's feelings of care and respect I am NOT a monster I am a caring emotional feeling heterosexual human being and I should be treated equally and respected as such Sadly, back here in real life, everyone is in their own dang world. Snobbish, snooty, to even give care to one person who only has few friends within this city, but is Mr. Jefferson's hometown. Not even as much acquaintances. I feel invisible in public, and it's very sad to me. At least I do have one friend who cares about me around here. Unfortunately, she refuses to go beyond just friends, but I care about her just the same anyway, because that is the kind of guy I am. Now understand, this is what I'm talking about for us autistic people. We are too shy by default, but on earning our trust, or if we feel comfortable or like the other person on our individual instincts, we will open up. And to start us right, we need either A, the other person to approach and talk to us upon their own will, or B, have our own trusted friend or family introduce us to other people of our respective ages. In this scenario, it was a great match for me 
or A, she is a single woman without a boyfriend, B, she is pretty and easy on my eyes, and C, this woman I could feel comfortable with and feel a good and honest aura from her. From this, a good friendship and hopefully a, a long relationship will stay between us for the long time. Do not bring me down here, naysayers and haters. Let's look at a few other scenarios of similar to opposite results. Obviously, most women, easy on my eyes, good humored, sweet, pretty, black, white, Asian, Christian, Jewish, Buddhism, I have no because I have no care about skin color or religion, whatever. I will be kind to all of them, respectful and welcoming them, to have them in my circle of friends, lesbians too. Just don't get on my bad side here. Men, my own kind, on the other hand, I will feel most hesitant towards, because I have had fewer male friends in my life and I have had mostly bad experiences around them. Plus, and this is very important, in my autism tests, it was found that I get along better with women well over men. And considering my life experiences and my own opinion, I totally agree with that. If the uh, individual, however, offers a uh, friendly gesture and does not make me angry or make me feel most uncomfortable or ill at ease, I will be willing to give him a chance and welcome him as a friend and nothing more. However, going back to the mean people of the internet, upon meeting one of them in real life, and I will be able to recognize them I'm sure enough, at least with basic instincts, I will not hold back my endured rage. Just ask this crying Clyde. Physically and mentally challenged individuals will vary more. Good results upon if they are easy to look at, if they are able to speak clearly, even slowly, that I can easily understand them. And now uh, the other part, the other side, whoa, back off, I'm spooked if you are ugly, seriously disfigured, especially in the face, that you mumble more than you speak, you're hard to understand at all. It is nothing personal, and I apologize for anyone who feels at unease after hearing what I just said, but it's just the way I feel, that's all. point, you would think I would be hap a happier autistic person, right? Finally having a wo the woman of my life to be here by my side and care about each other and such for the rest of our lives? Uh, but the truth is, for real, Mick and I, we don't hang out in person as much as we should be. Only fun conversations and the few times we did hang out. And she does not know that many people here in Charlottesville. All things appreciated in our friendship, Mick is just too busy to help me best. <sighs> Another thing about us autistic people, we do not like to be alone quote unquote 24-7. We need the emotional support of a true friend constantly and in person. Also on another note, apparently government funding goes more towards 
physical health over mental health. The brain is a part of our body, and not just any part, the most vital part. Why do we treat the rest of our body parts, which essentially alone are brainless, better than our one actual central processing unit that is not brainless? As a part of the body, funds should be equally distributed or equally divided between both physical and mental health. So then the cures for mental illnesses, including autism, can be found. It just makes me feel sad and furious at this time. I, for one, actually appreciate a true and full good quality friendship. Yet, in a world full of sick-minded people, one can only detest, I feel so paranoid, of a number of people. And I feel uncertain of most anyone I could ever trust and, or feel at ease around. The social phobias I can no longer tolerate. Which is why, unlike the autistic people who pitifully accept it as a forever lasting curse, I for one seek a cure. On the day, a resolution to reestablishing all connections in our brains with thorough corpus callosum repair and such, I, Christian Weston Chandler, We'll be there among the first in line to take the life-changing autism cure I have desired for so long. To establish a quicker, more socially active mind, a great sense of self-esteem, a great sense of self-reliance, a great sense of self-confidence, total independence, and freedom from the thorns of autism of any kind or sort. The life only an autistic person can ever dream of. I am Christian Weston Chandler, and this has been an autism tutorial. Thank you, and have a good and safe day.